Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post some videos every Wednesday and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through Bible studies, book reviews, discussions, and more. And as the title says above, this is pretty much a vlog. I don't know if this is going to be a week vlog or one day vlog or whatever the case, but um, it is currently Wednesday, December 1st, the first of the month and um i am out of it i went and got the second dose yesterday of the vaccine and again i'm going to say if you don't agree with the vaccine that is perfectly fine if you choose to unfollow me because i got the vaccine that is perfectly fine to each their own seek you know the lord on whether you should get it or not you know i'm not gonna condemn someone for getting it and i'm not gonna condemn someone for not getting it it is your decision um but i am now fully vaccinated um, and in my mind being fully vaccinated is the first and second dose i'm not doing a booster or anything like that but um yeah so far i am not as bad as i was with the first dose but still a little bit laggy <laughs> um yeah we're gonna leave it there so um yeah this is just a vlog of me sharing some things with you guys i guess um and the first thing i want to share with you guys is this big old box that you see in front of me as you can see it is from christianbook.com and i don't really like ordering from christianbook.com they have some great things but i hate the shipping prices however i did join in for the black friday sale because i needed to get some things for the youth ministry of my church if you guys don't know i am over the youth ministry at my church I am the youth pastor in training, um, which I'm still getting used to, and um, yeah, I teach the youth every Sunday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., and we have like many Bible studies right now. We are going over um, carnal versus spiritual. Um, I believe the scripture was 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 through 6, that scripture about how the weapons of our warfare are not carnal we're going over that we've been going over that for about a month and a half so the kids do have a sort of quiz on this coming sunday um the first sunday of december i said that i would give them a quiz and so i actually need to work on that so um this might just be a youth ministry behind the scenes type of vlog type thing i don't really know but um yeah i needed to get them some supplies materials and i did start doing um fundraisers for the youth ministry uh, so every Sunday after service we run a sort of youth ministry store where we're selling candy um, we did recently include t-shirts and journals that another one of the uh, one of the ministers in trainings um, she creates shirts like I do so she has her shirts in there um, and she's doing 50 50 so whatever profit she makes she'll keep 50% for herself and 50% will go to the youth ministry I'll be including my shirts in to the store as well um you know the youth do a lot of hands-on kind of diys and stuff like that and so we're including that in the youth store on top of like drinks chips and stuff like that and so um yeah i just i needed to get their supplies because i wanted it to be where they could just come on a sunday and not have to worry about bringing bibles notebooks pens anything because kids can be forgetful right um and so that's what i did i ordered some bibles luckily both bibles were only seven dollars on sale thank god um because i didn't want to spend a lot i think for all of this stuff total i spent almost 200 um not including the notebooks that i still have to get so if i'm, I'm including the notebooks that's probably going to be like another 50 so about 250 dollars for all the stuff i'm going to share with you guys right now um so yeah the bibles themselves i got 12 total um came out to like 100 bucks it was like less than at 97 dollars but i'm saying 100 to round up and so yeah we got the bibles and my arm is hurting i have the box it is a nice size box oh god um and i do have two of the bibles already out but i just want to show you guys if i can <laughs> show you so i'm taking out one of the bibles because i have the other two in front and i'm going to try to put this down without hurting myself but okay so for the kids um and when i say kids we have five five seven 
We have five. Well, we're gonna have a five-year-old, and we're gonna have, I believe, three, three or four eight-year-olds. So there's four young boys within the ministry um, that I'll be teaching. And so for them, I got this Bible here. It is the ESV Following Jesus Bible. It is from Crossway, and on it it says kids um, eight to twelve. And um, yeah, so I bought these for them. It does come saran wrap, and it is like the paper paperback type of material not like a soft cover um i already have one opened here and um though i have 12 bibles it's really just 10 because i did buy myself one of each so um yeah because i want to be able to teach from the same bible that they're using and the reason why i'm doing that is because even though it is the esv translation for example with the kids bibles there are um different things included in the bible that i want to make sure that when i am teaching to them i am helping them understand the articles and stuff like that so you know there's like things within the bible and i haven't gone through these 100 percent. i really just went on the went on christianbook.com googled esv bibles to see which they had um and again i was gonna get these in their favorite colors because i try i wanted to make sure that they the youth were um going to have fun with studying the word of god and not just be bored um, and I wanted to make sure that I got things that I knew that they would like. And so, like, the folders, the notebooks, and the pencil pouches are in their favorite colors. They chose two highlighter colors and things like that. I'm doing it that way so that they're getting involved in the process of studying. And so, yeah, um, I was going to get Bibles in their specific colors. I was supposed to get two pink Bibles, two purple Bibles, and then four blue Bibles. Um, but I ended up not doing that because it would have been really pricey and I did not want to spend an arm and a leg. And also because these materials they will not be taking home um these materials will specifically just be for service and so um when we're in church they don't have to worry about bringing the bible they can just get these bibles highlight these bibles if they want and the reason why i'm doing it that way is because no matter what happens whether um you know say if they leave the church and another youth comes in all of the bibles will have the same verses highlighted it might be in different color highlighters but say if i tell them all to highlight genesis 1 and 1 each bible will be highlighted with genesis 1 and 1 and there will be an explanation sort of of why it's highlighted and so i wanted it to be that way so that there's no um sort of favoritism going on or things like that everything is going to be seamless and easy and so yeah they have the following jesus bible esv and um inside it includes 450 w questions so the who what when where why um 70 plus following jesus sections which explain a text or how to apply it to a child's life you have 30 seeing jesus sections which helps readers see how the whole bible points to jesus um there's book introduction topical articles and kid-friendly maps and things like that um so yeah i thought this was a great bible to give to the youth and like i said it's for ages 8 to 12 they do have this in hardcover i wasn't gonna do that um again i got what was on sale during black friday and so yeah i'm not sure these are actually 23 bucks i caught them on sale for seven dollars and i had bought 12 of these and so yeah not 12 i bought six of these so right is it six i believe it's six of these but this one is particularly mine um so that i can make sure that i'm teaching accordingly if that makes sense and then the other bible i got for the preteens and teens is the esv reference bible um now originally i was going to do study bibles for each of the kids but i'm just like that's way too much um and of course i still desire to gift whoever doesn't have a bible at home a bible but these bibles are specifically for sunday so that they're able to follow along when the preacher is pre preaching or they don't have to worry about you know forgetting their bibles and things like that and so um that's how that's gonna go and so this is hardcover i did get the hardcover edition it is a basic black which i'm pretty sure they're not gonna be too happy about but i don't know maybe we can like paint these or i can get them some stickers or something like that and we can do arts and crafts covering these up um one of the ministering trainings that i have with me a part of the youth ministry actually is an artist um she paints she actually painted that in the the one over here and then i have like other paintings and stuff like that she's amazing at what she does um and so maybe we can have like an artsy type of day when we're decorating the bible we'll see but um yeah this is just the hardcover edition a sleek black bible nothing too crazy esv um double column and what i like is that it is not a study bible and i know that sounds crazy 
but the reason why I'm glad it's not a study Bible is because I don't want them to get too confused and overwhelmed most of my teenagers at the church do have their own study Bibles at home like my sister has an ESV student study Bible and um, the other young lady has her own Bible I don't remember the translation she has but hers is sort of like a study Bible I'm not sure if it's like the uh What's that NLT Bible that everyone has? Oh my God, I can't remember. If I can remember the name, I'll throw it on the screen somewhere. But like most of the teenagers have Bibles. And so um, this is specifically for church. And again, it doesn't matter whether they keep these or not. Um, no matter who comes into the church, who leaves the church, all verses will be highlighted at the same time, maybe in different colors. But um, yeah, we have this Bible and it does include introductions. Let me see. Um... I'm just trying to get to Genesis so at the beginning of every book there is a mini introduction I'm gonna do a full like video on these Bibles for you guys if you're interested um, and then there are cross references in the middle which I like because we like cross referencing things I'm not sure if this included anything else chart wise I know that in the back of the Bible there were maps so you do have your concordance in the back um, after Revelation which is a nice size concordance and then you have a list of illustrations and maps and so um yeah all the maps and things are in the back so everything that you need as far as like maps and illustrations all in the back and i do own i have these in my actual esv archaeological bible already and so um you know all of those are in the back and I think it's helpful because then I when I'm teaching I can say okay you guys let's turn to this page let's look at this and um, we can discuss what's going on or whatever the case may be and so yeah that's what I got and it comes in this hard case which is great so I will be traveling to and from church every Sunday with these Bibles for the youth which I'm super super excited about um, again I don't think I'm gonna actually keep this Bible I might just put it into for in, into the overflow for the youth simply because i have esv bibles um i don't think i have any up here right now no i don't i think i have one or two esv bibles um but i'm also thinking that maybe i should just take it because um you know it's compact we'll see how i feel if i want to just throw this with the rest of the other bibles but um yeah this one specifically for me again i will do video reviews on these but um outside of that i also oh my arm got some more stuff and so right now we have about eight kids um ranging from ages five to 16 and so for my older girls um i got them these two pencil cases they wanted purple so they have purple i am going to put their names on these once i get a label maker so we have that then for my two younger girls i got the pink ones and let me just show you guys for the older girls um i have sticky notes with all, all the kids names so i know who's who's but um right now the older girls have two highlighters of their choice a blue and black ink pen and then i'm also going to include um sticky notes probably two sticky notes each within each of the older girls pencil cases and probably the same thing with these younger girls because the younger girls i believe are like nine and ten or nine eleven and so um these again these pencil cases i got off of amazon so these ones are i don't even know i think it says so easy so i got two purple ones off of amazon i got uh six of these i got two pinks this one just says another day of sunshine and then in the front pocket it also has their names of who it belongs to and then I included in theirs um, the two highlighters and two pencils. I'm giving the younger kids pencils just because, you know, errors. I don't need them messing up notebooks and things like that. And so we have that. And then I have four of these pencil pouches for the boys at my church. So that's three and four. So we have four of those um, for the younger boys and of course it says the same thing another day i think i have to order a few more things and actually ship it out to um some of the youth that are not able to physically come every sunday because we do have a few youth that live upstate and things like that um and then 
these were the excess um, highlighters that I had because I bought two big boxes of 12 count highlighters and again like I said I let the youth pick out what they wanted and so what happened was I wrote down the supplies that I needed um I wrote down their favorite colors and then we went about that way and then so I did folders and highlighters and they picked everything themselves um and so I now also have the folders which I also have to label um so they're just these plasticky folders i got these because they also had extra little slots here and um here so i thought that was cool because if i wanted to like write a note i could put the note here or here or whatever the case may be if i wanted to include a card and so they will have their names on them i'm trying to again use the label maker my brother has to find his label maker and if he can't i'm probably just gonna have to um, suck it up and buy one myself um for them i have a label maker but it's really for my body butters and so i don't know if i'm going to be creative with the labels or not we'll see i don't want to just use a sharpie that's so like not it for me um and then yeah i don't know if i want to put vinyl on their um pencil prompters because i can definitely just heat press their names onto them so we'll see um but yeah the only thing i have to do now is get them each two notebooks they're gonna have a notebook to take home for any like at home assignments and then they're gonna have a notebook specifically for church um because they i asked them if they would be interested in like getting a notebook to write down their thoughts and questions because whatever my bishop teaches i basically have to go over it with them so that they understand it and that's what happened when i went over second corinthians 10 4 through 6 with them and things like that um i don't think i have one out you know i don't have one out i was going to show you guys but i'll probably show you on the computer because i also have to work on their test for it's not a test it's a quiz um i have to work on the quiz and the reason why i'm doing these quizzes is because i want to make sure that they're understanding what's being taught and even though the discussions we have are great i want to make sure that they're able to go home and to keep this stuff in their mind and so i did give them a three page uh, packet with just the scriptures i gave them the scripture in the king james version the amplified and the esv translation then i gave them a few definitions and then i did a few lists um and things like that i don't know let me see if i can grab everything oh i feel so out of it you guys don't understand i mean if we took the shot then you know but yeah um yeah okay so i think on amazon i can tell you guys right now so yeah the bibles were 6.99 each so seven bucks so i spent oh i spent a hundred dollars exactly 117 dollars on christianbook.com and then on amazon i spent 74 dollars flat i bought the 12 count sharpie uh, highlighters which was 547 but i had bought two of those and then the so easy uh, so easy wide pencil cases was eight bucks bought two of those and then the folders I got a pack of 12, um, two colors each, and that was 13 bucks. And then I got four of the blue pencil cases. The blue ones were $5 each, and then so were the pink ones, $5 each. And so I spent a total of $74 flat um, after that. And I ordered, let me see if they have the order date on here. They don't have the order date for Christian Book, so I don't remember. Like I said, I think that was Black Friday when I ordered um but yeah so let me just show you guys quickly and then let me so here is the the sheet that i went over and created for them so it just says power hour because that's what i call it right now i don't like to call it sunday school i don't like to call it Bible study i like to keep things you know fun for them and so that they don't feel like they're in school learning ah that hurt um so i call it power hour and like i said we're doing carnal versus spiritual the scripture is second corinthians um 10 four through six and like i said i gave them the esv the king james and the amplify then we went over definitions so i actually did this a month after we had started because they pretty much already already memorized everything so i have weapons um i have warfare i have carnal i have strongholds i have imaginations exalt captivity obedience revenge and disobedience which were words that were mentioned in those verses and then i go into the types of weapons which are your natural weapons and your spiritual weapons but then we list so like for natural weapons you have your hands guns objects and words and for spiritual you have the bible your voice kindness prayer fellowship speaking in tongues clapping your hands um your words when you're speaking dancing if you're doing praise and worship um praising worshiping the lord drums i, I had them listings and they gave me spiritual weapons and i was actually like mind blown by the kids 
Um, and then we talk about the two types of warfare, which is natural when you're fighting another person, and then spiritual when you're fighting against the work of Satan and his demons in the spiritual realm. Um, I briefly went over the types of strongholds, which are rational and irrational, but that's a little bit um, mature for them. So I just listed it. They don't really have to focus on that. And then I went through a list of various types of strongholds that teenagers and kids have, such as like prideful ideas, hate, anger, unforgiveness, violence and you know a stronghold is anything that um is in opposition to the true knowledge of god so like where he tells us to love hate would be a stronghold where he tells us to not envy jealousy would be a stronghold um those things kind of block you from the lord and so uh yeah that's pretty much what that was and then i had left two pages blank for like space blank for like notes and stuff like that so I'm actually going to be putting these into the folders. Even though I gave them these already, I also want to keep one within their folders just for future reference and stuff like that. And so I think I need to take eight, two, four, six, seven. I'm going to have to put out some more yeah i gotta print some more out but um on their quiz because i have everything here for their quiz um they're just gonna go over four definitions so they're gonna explain to me what warfare carnal stronghold and captivity is um i might actually take the out stronghold i'm not sure yet um then they're gonna tell me the two types of warfare and list the two types which are obviously natural and spiritual and then they're gonna do three lists so they're gonna list five types of spiritual weapons they're going to list three different types of strongholds and then give me two ways that they um show their obedience to christ and i did tell the kids that they cannot use prayer they cannot use the bible um because that is pretty much like their default answer to talk, to try to like get out of really answering the question and when i tell them that they actually give me some amazing answers like i told you they mentioned how like one of the boys he, he plays the drums he's interested in the drums and so when i had asked him you know what's what's a um a weapon and he didn't really understand i said well what's something that you like to do within the church and he said drums and i said yes that is a weapon because when you're playing the drums especially when it comes to praise and worship that sound of the drum is doing something in the spirit realm okay um when they said uh clapping your hands i was like yeah because when you clap your hands especially on one accord in church you're making a sound that the enemy can't stand um i think one of the kids told me speaking in tongues and i was like good one of the kids said dancing which she said that because they're a part of the dance ministry and i was mind blown by the kids and um you know the kids in the church are absolutely phenomenal um i used to think that they didn't understand but they understand it's just that you have to take the time to make sure that they understand what you're saying and so i'm actually literally enjoying the process of all of this with the youth ministry um it is absolutely amazing and so um we're actually preparing for this month they want to do a play and normally they do a play all about um what is it the birth of jesus but they specifically said that they're sick of doing the birth of jesus which i understand they do it almost every year and so they they one of the young ladies um literally she mentioned she said she wants to do a play all about when uh mary magdalene went to the cave and so that jesus wasn't there and i was mind blown mind blown i was like okay we can do that um they also want to do plays on like samson or like moses when he part the red sea and uh i'm just i am ecstatic grateful still nervous it's still nerve-wracking i'm not gonna lie it's still nerve-wracking um i planned i'm planning the movie night for them so we're gonna do a movie night on december 18th i actually need to make a flyer for that but um we're actually gonna watch jingle jangle um if you guys haven't seen that movie definitely watch it it's amazing it is about 90 percent in all black cast uh about christmas and the holidays and family and um it is such a well done movie i love that movie it was my favorite movie from last year and i watched it in december and it's probably still gonna be my favorite movie for this year but um yeah we went over like what they would like to eat food wise because it's going to be a christmas dinner movie night um so i don't know if we're going to do movie and then the dinner or if we're going to have the dinner and then the movie but that is what i'm planning and you know they gave me what they wanted to eat we went over the snacks and stuff like that the play will be for the last sunday of the month which is december 26th that will most likely be their presentation um so yeah i am just i'm mind blown 
by God, um, because despite all that has happened with this year, despite all of it, and despite the hurt that I felt, the betrayal that I felt, the tears that I've cried, um, he is still showing himself true, faithful, and just absolutely everything and more to me in this year. And um, I know that I'm going to leave this year completely different than I started the year because the, for the year I was ready I was like yeah I'm gonna hit 30 and then right before 30 hit things just started happening from April up until now even now um my mindset is changing on certain things and certain ways that I used to carry myself concerning people and situations and um it's just it's amazing and I'm gonna do a whole video of what 2021 has taught me this year and how I've been dealing with my grief and things like that because um I don't care what anyone says when you've been in a relationship for almost a decade with someone um and then you end and not technically not on good terms but on okay to it, really it doesn't matter what kind of terms you end on whenever you end there is a grieving process to that and um you know some people like to say oh my god you're depressed and it wasn't depression um, I felt myself slipping into one, but I wasn't depressed. I was just grieving and dealing with it the way that I kind of knew how. And I will say that I thank God that I have a relationship with him and Jesus because without them, I probably would have gone into that depression and I would have lost my mind and I probably would have committed suicide. And I'm being 100% transparent with you guys. You guys know I like to keep it real authentic, transparent with you as much as I can. And um, this is me as Shanae, Nate Denise, as you all know me as, um, being honest. Um, it doesn't matter what position you hold in ministry. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you have of the word of God. We all have those weak moments. And I, I'm being honest, this year, if I did not have the Lord on my side, um, if I did not have the relationship with him, I probably would have been somewhere underneath some dirt, if you get my drift. Um, because it is hard. It is very much hard. Um, I didn't think that going into 30, I would be a single mom. And though my son's father is, you know, active in his life, there are certain aspects that um, I wish would change. But he's always been that way concerning those aspects and areas. And it, it, it doesn't shock me, but it shocks me. Um, and you know, having conversations with my son, my son is very mature for his age. He is seven years old. He'll be eight in February. Um, and so he is two years from double digits and my son desires so much. He desires to have a sibling. He's very adamant about a sister. He's been saying this now for almost, almost, uh, three, three, four years, maybe five years. He's been asking me and, um, you know, unfortunately, I can't do that for him right now, but I'm praying that within the next two, three years, maybe two, five years, the Lord, you know, does what he does. Um, because I want to do things the right way. I want to be married. Um, and I know marriage is in the car to me. I've had people have dreams. Three different people in the same month have dreams about me getting married. But within their dreams, they did not see my son's father um, as my husband they saw someone else and they one girl actually one of the ladies actually saw my son's father in the crowd of that dream um he was like at the wedding but he wasn't the groom and i guess this how can i say this i guess because of the prayers that i've been praying to the lord and um then getting those confirmations of those dreams of me getting married to someone because my grandmother knows um well she knew who my son's father was she knows who he is um and pretty much everyone in my family knew that we were together at least that's what i was thinking um so when she had called me one time and she said yeah i couldn't see his face but he was saying some awesome things about you or when my friend called me and was like yeah i saw you getting uh, i saw some dude walk up to you and um you know actually marry him and pastor was in a dream saying this time and then when I had the other young lady telling me that um, they, she saw me getting married to someone who was um, of a lighter complexion than my son's father, but that my son's father wasn't at the wedding. He was he was at the wedding, but he was sitting in the crowd with everyone else. I guess it was kind of like God was letting me know that no longer can he be the one. And, um, you know, I'm going to do a whole video on that because I know I used to talk about how God revealed to me that he was the one. And um, he did, but again i can never get out of my head what my bishop had told me about how um you know the people wanted the king and god let them get uh saul and saul was king and he was god's chosen 
But when he stepped out of alignment with God, God had to replace him with David. And um, they still had a king, but the king was no longer going to be Saul. It was not going to be David. And David had to wait a couple of years and do a couple of things and deal with a couple of situations. But in the end, that king was still there, but it was changed from Saul to David. And um, when my bishop broke that down to me, it was enough to be said. And then that Saturday, I caught him um, with another person, another person. Um, and yeah, does it hurt? It does still hurt, especially because it's an older woman, um, like older than me like by 10 years. It's like older, but I've, I've realized that what he wanted, I couldn't give it to him because he wanted someone that was, I guess, I don't want to say stable because I am stable, but he wanted a partner that was down for all types of business and that's not me um, I'm sorry like if I want to spend time with you I want to spend time with you not with you to build on your businesses all the time like no if I say hey let's have a family night and a movie night I want to have family and movie night with you and our son not you working on your phone or working on your computer or doing research or you got to go and do something else and it's just like he's a workaholic I'm not gonna lie he's definitely a workaholic and um it's just certain aspects I always pray to God about and things that I've always said throughout the years of us being together that um, I would always tell my mother like I don't want to marry him like this because of such and such and such and such or praying to God about hey Lord I wish that this would change and such and such and such and such and I realized that I was doing a lot more praying than he was he I don't I don't want to say he hasn't because I'm not sure but I honestly wholeheartedly believe in my heart that he never prayed for me um and that was because of a conversation we had one time when he said something and i realized that he didn't pray for me but i prayed for him i think our entire relationship i prayed um and so you know it's a hard pill to swallow especially being pretty much traded for an older woman but at the same time even though it hurts i'm actually thankful to god that he stepped in and did what needed to be done um how again how it all happened i don't agree with because you know there were times when we were gonna break up before and it could have just been done with and things were said and we just you know he agreed to keep it going so to find out that we weren't together for two years um didn't make sense to me and it still doesn't make sense to me um and as much as i want to say i still want closure from him i'm not gonna get that closure i'm never gonna get that closure from him which is why I gave back the ring. Um, and if you saw my post, you know, I was actually going to pawn that ring. And not out of being spiteful or bitter or anything like that. Because like I said, I'm, it is what it is. I always told him from the very beginning, um, if we're not in love with each other and we have a kid, we're not going to stay together or be married just because we have a kid. That's not a, a, a an example I want to show my son or my child, period. And this was way before we even had our son that I said this to him. Um, so to see that everything that I said to him from day one had been ignored... It hurts it's it's a different type of betrayal that I never thought I would have to experience um, and I you know I never thought that I would be a single mother at 30 um, and sometimes the enemy plays with my mind about you know being 30 and um, being a single mother and no one's gonna want me and no one's gonna love me and um, you know that he was the best that I had and um, I really have to negate those thoughts because I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I know that I am God's chosen I know that I am loved by God and I know that everything works out for the good so I have to keep that in mind but it's a constant battle because the enemy likes to play games and especially since I've seen so many people getting married or getting engaged or having kids and I desire to be married I desire to have more kids I want to have at least two three more kids um definitely have my daughter of course um but I also know it's in God's timing and not mine. And so it's it's a struggle daily to, I guess, understand my reality as of now. Like, this is my reality. I am a single mother. Um, you know, I still live at home with my mother and my siblings, which isn't bad because, I mean, when you think about it, African-American people, people of color, we tend to want to move out of our family's homes quickly, especially once you hit, like, 18, I, I'm out. 
but when you look at other cultures when you look at asian culture the asian culture and when i mean asian i mean like you know the chinese the japanese the koreans the indians however you look at it even the spanish people they have no problem staying home with their family members especially if they're not married like they live in big houses with their family members now that's not something that i want to do because i think we as people of color we just like our space and our time away from family but i mean i'm happy that i have the chance to still be home but this isn't what i wanted and then when you have the enemy whispering in your ears oh you're never gonna move out oh you're never gonna get this or you're never gonna do that or you're never gonna do that it's hard it's very hard and so this year has just been one crazy year for me it's been crazy 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 um so yeah i guess that's it i don't even know if i'm gonna continue this vlog we'll see i probably will continue this vlog um I do feel a little hot and I have a slight headache right now. Just a slight headache. Um, no nausea right now. I had nausea yesterday. My arm really, really hurts. And it's like, they gave me the shot up here, but you feel most of the pain here. I don't understand. Um, I think one of the newest symptoms that I experienced was jaw pain. My jaw was hurting. Like, immediately after they gave me the shot, I got a headache and I got nauseous. But then I also felt pain in my jaw, which... I didn't understand that. I, I didn't understand. Um, my, my mother didn't even understand that. But I've noticed that I reacted completely different to how my siblings reacted. Because all my siblings got the shot. My mom got the shot. And they were fine. But it's like, it hits me completely different where I have chills, fevers, and things like that. I had a fever yesterday. I haven't checked my temperature as of yet. Because I know if I see that it's yellow or red, I'm going to have to go and lay out. And I don't want to do that. So, I've been taking um, acetaminophen. I've been taking Tylenol yeah so i really want to try to sit up and um get their quiz done and so i actually have my laptop on my bed so i'm actually gonna sit on my bed and do that um and probably put these in their folders as well i think i need to print out more um, of those and then i need to do some other like ministerial things and administrative things for church it's insane, but um, oh, actually, I don't need to print one out because one of the kids is actually, oh, two of the kids are younger, three of them actually. I don't know what I did with that paper. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it either. I don't know what I did with that paper. I gotta find it. But I think the boys don't need these. Not that I'm thinking about it. Logan and son do not need those. Um, but the older kids do. I'm gonna be doing other things and printing out things for the younger kids to do. Um, I'll either make traceable sheets for them because i have a lot of workbooks for kids over here on the second shelf um that i can do with them but we'll see we'll see how this works out so, i have the girls already the girls have theirs and then the four boys i'm not going to include any of those because they're younger um, they're about like eight nine years old and so um i'm gonna probably do something different with them <sighs> but yeah actually i'm actually getting a headache right now so i'm not even gonna do anything else my headache is really banging and so i'm just gonna put this all up i guess i'll end this vlog here it's a really short vlog i wanted it to be like a longer vlog but i'm just i'm not up for it and i know if my mom came home and saw me doing this i would get yelled at and so I'm going to be obedient um, and just rest up um, and try to read. I haven't really been doing great with my reading at all. Um, if you guys follow my Goodreads, you see that I've been reading um, relationship goals for a very long time <laughs> because I've just been slacking. I'll start reading, read about 50 pages, and then I don't want to read anymore. And that's so unlike me because I'm a book nerd. I read three, four books a day. Um, and to not have been reading as much as I like it's kind of depressing it's, it's, it's depressing I'm not gonna lie and so I think what I'm gonna do 
is um probably me because i don't know if you guys see this, this thick book right there i'm reading that which is a fantasy novel it's about 800 pages i normally could read that like in four days <laughs> i haven't been doing that and so um i'm gonna do a little bit of reading i'm actually gonna go take my temperature because i feel a little warm and um i'm gonna just play games on my switch my son got pokemon for um as a christmas gift and so he's letting me play that i'm currently playing animal crossing and then i also got a few games during their black friday Cyber monday sale from the store um those tycoon games let me just show you so i have you know tycoon games this one has three games in one then i have this one that one and then the food truck one as well like i said my son got pokemon um for christmas so um you know it's an early christmas gift and so i've been playing that but um yeah i'm gonna put these bibles back in the corner and i guess that's it for this video because i'm, I'm honestly out of it i'm seeing like colors right now so i'm i'm gonna go away now um i will have that giveaway video coming to you guys i actually have the stuff right here on my bed oh so i have these books here which are going to be for the facebook giveaway and then i have a bag here with a bunch of giveaways that will also be done i can lift it up oh this bag is full to the top with planners and goodies that i want to give away um through the facebook page the facebook group through the instagram um and then flash giveaways and stuff like that as well and so yeah i'm gonna go um get back in the bed because i'm tired and my head hurts and i still haven't even eaten my soup my soup is slightly cold so and I have a cold hot chocolate sitting here, which I'm probably going to have to pour out. Yeah, I'm going to pour that out because I'm not, I'm not feeling hot chocolatey, which I probably should just drink the water or ginger ale. So, um, yeah, I'll chat with you guys in the next vlog. I wanted to make this vlog a little longer, but when I do make the quiz, I'll show you guys everything on the computer and things like that. But yeah, I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you guys for waiting, commenting, and subscribing and all that great stuff and i'll see you in the next one bye